Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe. Got some interesting stories to discuss with you today. But before we get into any of that, just want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. But let's get into it firstly with Chelsea player wage cuts. Um, we've heard a lot about this with several Premier League clubs now um, negotiating wage cuts with their first team squad um, to cope with the current pandemic and Chelsea are no different um, and Simon Johnson in the Athletic really did a good piece breaking this down as you can see Chelsea pay cuts explained why not a deferral what does it mean for transfers this really goes in well and explaining what's happened so Chelsea players have agreed to take a 10% pay cut starting in May for four months to help the club cope with the effects of football being shut down during the coronavirus pandemic like all teams, Chelsea is suffering financially without match day revenue and there are no guarantees when that will return. There is no time frame as yet for when fixtures can be played in front of fans at Stamford Bridge again, so the hierarchy are having to respond accordingly. It is understood that Chelsea director Marina Ganaskaya made the first move. She stated the club stance to captain Cesar Azpilicueta and he then relayed the information to the rest of the first team squad via a WhatsApp group already in place for players to communicate. It is believed some individuals share concerns concerns with each other about the possibility of Chelsea spending big on new players in the transfer market whenever the window reopens, despite asking the current squad to make the sacrifice. However, at no point did the issue become acrimonious and everyone voted unanimously in favour of the motion. And I think just generally praise for Chelsea, I think, during this current pandemic and current situation, because I think the club have done a lot of good work. They, in some cases, I think has gone unnoticed and maybe not as praised in certain sections of the media as some other clubs who maybe have done things at first that uh, seemed wrong. Uh, but it's not about point scoring about other teams. You know, it's all about um, what Chelsea have done and praise for Chelsea, really, because as the article states very well, it has helped that the club has done many positive things during the lockdown, not furloughing non-playing staff, providing free free rooms for NHS uh, service staff in the hotels and paying for over 13,000 meals a week to be sent to five hospitals. So just generally, I think the club has acted really well. Um, Roman Abramovich, has, I think, has come across very well in this situation. And it's good to see, and it's good to see that unity within Chelsea and the Chelsea squad to do that. Apparently, Frank Lampard wasn't really involved um, within the negotiations with this. And it's good to see they're all on the same board. Simon Johnson did talk about transfers and he did talk about how of course, this COVID situation is going to impact transfers and the transfer window and how much Chelsea are going to spend. We're going to be talking a bit about a player that could be coming in for a high fee. Um, so we, we really don't know how this is going to impact, but to suggest that the transfer window is going to be the same, I think you need to lower your expectations for the transfer window because I think that this situation is so unpredictable and with players now having to take wage cuts I think you can expect similar effects negative effects towards the amount Chelsea will invest in the summer or whenever the window takes place um, but there we go so that's the first story uh, let me know your opinions on the current situation the pay cuts what do you think Chelsea have done well during this pandemic let me know in the comments below next is Philip Coutinho uh, Sky Sports are reporting on Coutinho to Chelsea uh, Chelsea offered the chance to sign Brazilian by Barcelona he is currently on loan at Bayern until the end of the season, but the Bundesliga club are unlikely to take up their option to sign him permanently. Coutinho moved to Barca from Liverpool for 145 million three years ago. He came on as a second half substitute when Bayern won 3 0 at Chelsea two months ago in the Champions League. And when he was in London, he told his agent he would be interested in returning to the Premier League. Coutinho's agent this month told Sky Sports News his client would love to come back to the Premier League but questioned what the financial conditions of all clubs would be following the pandemic as we were just talking about. Um, I've stated in some ways I've slightly changed my opinion about Coutinho coming to Chelsea. I feel that I saw some quotes from Jamie Redknapp when he was talking about Mason Mount and it it potentially hindering Mount's development and that stance from me really hasn't changed. I think if we're factoring in two elements for me, not only what the pandemic is going to do to this transfer window and how limited Chelsea's business can be, you know, if we're only able to sign two or three players, I don't feel Coutinho is top of the list. It shouldn't be. It is still, for me, a luxury signing. My stance on that hasn't changed. Um, left back is more priority. Centre back is probably more priority. A backup goalkeeper. If out of contract players leave, yes, whenever I talk about Coutinho, I hear about him playing wider, but still... 
I think about the development as well of Mason Mount. I want to see personally, as a fan, him get more minutes and more development and that continue next season. And Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I want to see him get more minutes. And we've talked about midfield. We've talked about what we've got in midfield. But I still think alone is probably the best option if Chelsea can get it. Um, I think that signing him permanently, I think based on the price and the wages, I think would be ridiculous. I think a bit like the Kovacic deal, if Chelsea can get a loan, I think happy days. And then we can see what he can do potentially in a wider role under Frank Lampard next season. It provides competition. Those young players need to deserve their spots and minutes. I'm not for any minute saying that uh, they just should be thrown in because they're young players. They need to deserve their minutes under Frank Lampard. It needs to be a meritocracy, which is what Lampard wants. And uh, Coutinho would improve our squad absolutely and improve our first team. Uh, but we're just going to have to wait and see. And this also changes reports from elsewhere that Chelsea were really in negotiations with uh, with Barca over Coutinho. I think this is still maybe restricted that a little, saying that he, we've been offered the chance to sign him. How serious Chelsea are in actually signing him. Uh, we still haven't heard a lot of concrete info on that, it personally for me, in terms of sources I trust. Um, so let me know your opinions on Coutinho. Do you think this uh, report from Sky gets it any closer to happening or not? Let me know in the comments below. And lastly, I want to talk about Jorginho uh, because reports were coming out of Italy of him leaving Chelsea to go and play for Maurizio Sarri once again at Juventus. Um, but then quickly, Joao Santos, Jorginho's agent, ruled out a move um, completely. Um, and he gave some quotes, which I want to read you now. He said, I read, but I never had contact with them. Neither Sarri nor Juve's chief football officer called me to have information on Jorginho. As of today, I know absolutely nothing about this situation. The lad is very happy in London where he's proving his worth and still has three years left on his contract. His agent also went on to go and say that a new contract could be uh, negotiated soon with Chelsea. So that's positive news. But we've heard this all before. I heard this last summer when Sarri left that Jorginho was going to pack his bags and leave to Juve. Of course, that didn't happen. He stayed at Chelsea. And once again, this was ruled out very quickly um, by Jorginho's agent, which is good. And then as well, on top of this, Jorginho gave some quotes to ESPN Brazil in an interview talking about criticism from fans, uh, the current Chelsea team, how he thinks the season is going, his relationship with Frank Lampard, all of that. So I want to talk about some of these quotes as well and read you some of them. Firstly, on fans changing their opinions positively on Jorginho, he said, this has a lot to do with Lampard thanks to the importance he has within the club and the way he spoke about me as a person and as a player at the beginning of the season. Then the opinions of me started to change. Those criticisms were without basis. The stats told a completely different story compared to the narrative. I have to thank this coach a lot, all thanks to his words. It's not easy for a coach to step forward and speak well of a player that the supporters do not like. Then he goes on to speak about the season. He says, sometimes, honestly, there is a lack of experience in the group to understand the moments of the game. Sometimes you cannot just attack, attack, attack. At times, you need to also hold yourself back. I believe that growth needs time. We are changes in our playing style. It is a more direct form of football, a way of play with less ball retention, but more direct, more attack minded. This makes me more exposed in my position. I have more space on the pitch to cover running alongside the other midfielders. Honestly, I believe this will take at least until next year, but then I could be talking about something that will be two years in the making and then next year Chelsea is there fighting at the top it depends on how the team reacts to the learning process these are really enlightening quotes and as Jorginho is one of my favorite players and all the criticism and scrutiny I talked about it in my video yesterday when I was talking about players of the season for Chelsea and it's really positive and we speak so much about replacing the leadership and replacing the strong characters that we had before at Chelsea Jorginho is one of those characters. I think all of his quotes that he's ever given whilst being a Chelsea player, I think reflect really well on his character and personality and the sort of person you want in a dressing room. He responds well to criticism. He wanted to prove people wrong and he has proved people wrong. And I think it was so positive early on that Lampard last summer really stamped his approval over Georgie and said, no, this is my player. This is a player who is going to be important to Chelsea. I'm not going to discard him. And we've seen that throughout the season. And I think Jorginho has proved a lot of people wrong, which I think is right. I like the quote right at the start when he talks about stats over the narrative and, you know, the narrative and perception over reality, which is a big problem with a lot of players in the modern game. People taking a small sample and then extrapolating that out and saying this is what this player is without looking at not only stats, but performance levels and, and looking at what the actual impact and their actual role within a team. It's interesting when he talks about the style of football changing to be more direct. We do know that under Lampard, he wants his team to play a little bit more faster it is going to be a bit more direct not as possession based which of course 
which is Jorginho's, you know, bread and butter. He loves playing in a role um, where it is more about possession. Chelsea still retain a lot more possession than they used to. It's not like we've reverted back to pre sari but still that's uh, enlightening, I think, and interesting and exciting to hear as a fan talking about and sort of opening up about the style of football changing. Um, but I think this is a player we talk about, you know, selling players. We talked about Kante. I don't want to sell him and I don't want to sell Jorginho because if Dave doesn't play as much next season, which I think a lot of us expect, you know, Rhys James is going to take over that role. We're going to need a leader. We're going to need someone with experience in this squad. Yes, we want the young players to come through, but you can't discard the older players. And if Willian and Pedro are to leave, um, even Olivier Giroud could leave. You want these older players with good heads on them to lead these younger players to 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 help them along the way. You know, helping a Billy Gilmore along the way as well. There's so much praise for Billy Gilmore and it's right. And really, I think a player like Billy Gilmore could be helped along the way by Jorginho and his experience and nous and uh, intelligence of doing right things on the pitch. And I think that still Jorginho can contribute a lot to Chelsea, not only on the pitch, but off it as a leader. But that is it for this edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Please let me know your thoughts on everything I discussed in the comments below thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload follow me on twitter at son of chelsea and i'll see you again